Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Today we got our Class A amplifier, the Olive 5. It's built up, it's ready to put on a heat sink and test. Okay, I've got to solder some test wires on it. Then we're going to bring the camera over, put this on a heat sink. Kind of a temporary heat sink today. Hopefully we can power this up and run it and take a face gain test. Alright, let's try it. All right, so here is the board, and there's our heat sinks. This guy is kind of a, kind of beefy. I don't know if he's beefy enough, but we're gonna just power the one side, and we're gonna use this guy. I'll show you how we're gonna do this. What I have is the board here. You can see it's soldered. I've got some test leads just so I can grab onto things. Okay, I've got the transistor soldered. And guess what? I put a little capped on tape <laughs> just to isolate it from the heat sink. Now this isn't going to be the best setup. I'm going to put a little bit of uh, thermal paste underneath these and try to improve a little bit. And then what we're going to do is I'm not going to screw this down. This is just temporary. So I'm going to use this heat sink to kind of press them down. Okay? I'll press them down like this and then we'll uh, power this thing up. Okay, I use some clamps to hold these uh, this heat sink down in place, and uh, I'll take a thermal picture during the test. Hopefully, we'll get that far and everything will start up and run. So I haven't powered it yet. I'm waiting for you guys. So let's uh, get this thing clamped down, and we'll power this up. By the way, this channel down here. You see, there's a little lip down here. It just fits these pets just just right. So they just lay right down inside that channel, holds them in place so they won't slide. All right, guys, so I've got a clamp right here on this end of the heat sink and a clamp on this side. So I've tested it and I think it's going to hold it down so they're level enough all the way across. Just a nice bit of pressure on them. All right, so I got the power clipped on the board. There's our plus 34 right there, so, and here's our minus 34, and here's our ground right here in the middle. And our outputs right here, and our inputs right here. They're not going to be connected yet. We're just going to power this up and see how it goes. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to power it right now. I'm going to use this power supply right here. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and power it up. We're going to have these in series. Okay, so this button's in, that button's out. Here's our master uh, controls on this side. We have our plus and minus, and these two are connected together internally. So we got our plus, our ground, and our minus. Okay, it's like two batteries on, in series, right? And the center of it is here, black and red. So we're gonna use this instead of our AC power supply so we can control just the DC and focus on the board today. And then the way this power supply will work is these switches allow me to see amps or volts on this side or amps or volts on this side. So I'm going to put volts. I'm going to watch this one. This guy will track it. And then I'll watch the current on this side. That way I'll know whatever current's here will be on this side. And, you know, so that way I can watch current and voltage at the same time. Okay, so I've got the leads down here across the 47 picofarad uh, capacitor and I got this meter here reading voltage so we're supposed to be uh, getting four or five volts across that capacitor and this little pot down here I can adjust to try to tweak that in I think so try to set that so you can see it without glare let's see maybe we can turn it on all right let's see if we can try to get enough light but we want to be able to see our LED too. And the LED is right here. Okay, I'll bring the voltage up slow and I'll tell you what the current is and the voltage. Okay, I'm bringing things up now just slowly. All right, let's bring up the voltage. Now, the thing is, this thing does take some current. So, okay, right there at 8 volts, all of a sudden things turned on. Look, we got 5 volts there already and I got 1.8 amps flowing. So, already we've got some power going 
Okay, I don't see that voltage changing. The current's not really changing. I got the volt. I'm been bringing the voltage from eight to twenty-eight right there. Okay, that's pretty cool. So it did look like it held pretty good. Now, just to experiment, I want to I want to adjust that control pot just to see if it's supposed to be between four and five volts. It was five. I want to crank it like down to four and a half volts if I can. So I have to reach in and put this little screwdriver on that pot there. All right, right now it's all the way clockwise. And so I'll take it counterclockwise and after I turn up the voltage. I always get a little nervous with the voltage up, but okay, let's start turning it counterclockwise. Looks like the voltage is dropping. All right, guys, I want to show you this screwdriver. Uh, See this little plastic one that has a little straight edge right here on this end? Well, on this end, the tip's down inside here. So it's down the barrel. So that way you can go on top of one of these little potentiometers and you can spin it around without having to flop off. So I was kind of having a problem with that. So I went and pulled this guy out of the toolbox. And let's try that again. Actually, I got it. Uh, you'll see on the voltmeter here, I got it down to four and a half volts and the current actually started to drop once I got to the point where I could turn it. So right now, see I'm locked in. So now I can turn it and I won't slip off. Okay, I'll go ahead and bring up power for you so you can see. Okay, right around 10, 11 volts is where it turns on. And then it holds pretty steady regardless of my power rails. Uh, okay, so Right now I'm about 1.2 amps on the power rail and 4.5. See, and if I go down, I can drop that current right down. It starts to drop right off, so uh, drop down below one amp. So right, 4.5, it's 1.2 amps. At this point is where I've got control. If I turn it up, it will 4.7, I'm at 1.6 amps. Okay, 4.8, I'm at 1.85. So I'm almost at the max there. Okay, right there, I'm kind of maxed out at 4.82 and I'm at 1.92 amps. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop that down. I'm gonna drop it to 4.6. Okay, 1.9 amps. It doesn't move much until I, okay, right there is where I get some adjustments. So yeah, right about here is where it starts to drop down with me. It must be a 10 turn pot. So I'm going to put it 4.6, let's say. Okay, 4.6, we're at 1.44 amps. 1.46 amps right there. Okay, I'm going to put a generator here on the input. We will put the plus here and the minus up on this ground. Okay. So there's our generator input. And then we'll get a scope probe on the output here. We'll do it no load here at first. Let me use this mix sig differential probe on the output just make it easy all right what i did is i've got the differential probe kind of fell down here I've got set times 50 position i've got a leads wrapped around and they're coming in right here so the returns coming down into this ground and positive is right there on the output and then i'll turn this voltmeter so we can still see the the volts all right, so let's see our first power up. Uh, I got, so you can see the LED here, and you see the meter down there, see if we hold that four and a half volts, 4.6 volts. I got the Mixix scope ready to go. So the uh, generator's at one kilohertz. Right now it's 100 millivolts output. So as we bring it up, it should start operating. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring up the voltage, and immediately we see a signal. Okay, we still got our 4.6 and everything's looking okay and that signals uh, this is two volts per division all right so i just brought it up and down real quick just to check it out it looks like it's going everything's looking pretty good so we'll bring it up again this time i'll bring up the uh, generator signal you know we'll get some more amplitude some power out and uh Keep an eye on everything, and I'll probably just run it for a couple minutes just to bring it back down, see if anything's getting hot, okay? So let's go ahead and try it again. 
So go ahead and bring the voltage back up. And bring it back up to that 20 volts. So it's plus minus 20. Now I'm going to bring the signal back up. It's 600 millivolts, 7, 8. Let's see where it clips. Right there's where it's clipping. And that's about 1.4 volts RMS. Okay, I'll bring it right there, freeze it, and drop the power. All right, what do we get there? About 15 volts RMS. All right, so when I shut off power, what I do is I, I come over and I, I t test touch each one of these resistors just to see if anything's getting hot. And resistors are very cool. There's hardly any heat at all on them. And then I test these little heat sinks in the middle. And everything seems to be cool. Then filling the heat sinks here, um, now the bottom heat sink I start, I can feel, if I reach underneath, I can feel a little bit of warmth, but right now it's not feeling like it's, nothing's getting really hot. All right, so I like to work my way up, uh, you know, minute, you know, a few seconds, up to a few minutes, and you know, where I start feeling more confidence that we're not gonna have something blowing up on us. And right now everything seems to be pretty stable, so I'm, power it up one more time and this time I think what I want to do is I'm going to pull up the uh, FFT and just see if we see any noise. So let's just go ahead and do it. I'm going to start bringing up the input voltage right now. Okay I'm back up to yep there we go plus minus 20 turn the scope back on. All right and then uh, bring the signal up. Okay it's clipping just out of clipping right there and about 14 volts RMS. Okay, let's turn on the math, and here I'll center up, hit position on that, hit the position on that one, okay, it is centered there, so put it right there, I'm going to spread this out a little bit, okay, I need a few more waveforms up here on channel 1 to get a better look in the FFT, yeah, see how small those spikes get when I do that, that's what we want. You don't want those big wide spikes that look like, you know, tents. You want narrow spikes. Okay, and, and then we'll get channel one up here. Out of the way a little bit. All right, guys, so I just turned off power again, and I just felt everything. Uh, just felt the resistors, top of these transistors, and then I filled top of this heat sink, which is on top of the FETs, and that feels pretty cool. When I reach underneath here on the side, on either side I can feel a little bit of warmth but and it's a plastic top so I wouldn't expect to feel much here on top but when I feel the front and the back of the seat sink it doesn't feel you know it might be warm but that's about it so yeah I have this jewelry on so I turn off power before I start touching things I mean anything over 32 volts is DC is actually getting on the dangerous side all right, guys, let's go ahead and bring here. I'm going to start the scope again. This time I'm going to bring up 20 volts. I've got the FFT set. Look at that because the signal's getting clipped right there. And we're coming out of being clipped. I'm bringing the voltage up. And you don't see this. You know, once you stop seeing this rise, and I'm still bringing the voltage up, that I know we're not being clipped. So right around 20 volts right there. And you can see, uh oh, didn't mean to grab those guys. Forget about the touch screen sometimes. Okay, but you see they're right about this level here. And then if I go up a little bit higher, they drop a little bit more, about 23 volts. And then if I go to 31.6, they're dropped about that much. Now I'm gonna freeze it. I'll bring the voltage down. So, this is one kilohertz per division. So that's second, uh, two kilohertz, three, the fourth you don't really see, fifth, sixth, seventh, and so on. And these are all about four, see the center line here, let me turn off channel two, or let me turn off channel one. All right, now you can see it all by itself. And uh, so here's the center line. These are about, oops, moved it again. Shoot, I gotta stop doing that. Okay, 
These are about 40 dB down. They're two grids down. And the peak is, it says 20.6, I think that says, uh, dBs up. So uh, the signal noise is about 60 dB from that peak down. And every 20 dB is a 10x factor. Now what I want to do is go ahead and turn on the scope again. I want to bring that signal back up. I'm going to bring the input voltage back up so you'll see it. Okay, so I'm back up to 31. This time I'm going to lower my amplitude on the signal we're feeding. And let's see what happens. I'm down at 0 0.6, 0 0.5, 0 0.3. Let me get channel 1 up so you can see it. So you can see how small it is. And we still have these uh, spikes. I think that's just come from the generator. Um, there's 100. Okay, I'm down to, I'm down to 10 millivolts right there. And we see a few of them. If I come up to, okay, about 60 millivolts RMS. So that looks like it's just maybe pickup that I'm getting in my generator coming across. Yeah, it looks like these are all coming from the generator. They're not really being amplified any more than, you know. So here's the signal we're putting in, the one kilohertz, right? Now bring that signal up and you can see the other signals don't really change much. Okay, we're 300. You can see the channel one amplitude starting to get bigger. This guy right here is getting bigger and these guys are all staying down there. Okay, that's one point that's one point four two volts in. So I'll just freeze that. And that's uh, fourteen point three eight volts RMS output. Okay, I'm coming back down here to just kind of I've turned off power, I'm just filling things. Now I feel this resistor actually starting to get warm. I can put a thermal couple just so we can monitor that. That might be the best way to do it. I'm seeing like 30 degrees here on the board. I got about 35 on the end there. So I'm getting about 37 underneath the heat sink. You get a little paranoid when until I build confidence. I'm going to get rid of the math and just spread out the uh, channel 1 signal a little bit so we can look at that a little bit better. Position that center. Okay, looks pretty clean, right? Now if I spread that out so you can see the top of the waveform. Okay, let me go ahead and bring up the voltage again and turn on the scope and let us capture a clean signal. Okay, there's a clipping and I'm at 14 volts, 18, 19, 20. So coming out clipping and there we go. I can bring the signal up a little higher. Here, let me drop the amplitude so I can get a little higher signal. See where we start to clip again. Now, right about there, I'm a, that's a 2.3 volts in. So I'm at 2.1 right there. And you know, we're not really drawing any more input power, right? Because class A, we're really just burning the power whether we got the signal or not. All right, time to put an eight ohm load on it. This is a 200 watt resistor. Let's warm this bad boy up. Okay guys, let's get a little power on it. I've got the eight ohm load connected down here. So I'm gonna bring up the voltage again. And I see the same current. It's about 1.4. 1.2 amps right now. Okay, I'm going to bring up the input signal. And our input power didn't really change much. Here, max out. Okay, right about there, I guess. Uh, we're about 22.9 volts RMS. All right, there's a little bit of clipping right there. Okay, 21.2. Okay, I think things heated up or whatever and brought it down a little bit. 
you know we're also dropping a little bit on it uh, they feel cool okay let's go ahead and uh, capture that and bring it down and I'll check temperatures again I'm, I'm starting to feel pretty good that I don't feel anything getting really hot but let's feel that load now it wasn't on long enough to get it warm I mean now that we're putting current out through the load we're putting current through different resistors so yeah these resistors over here are getting a little bit of current but they're still still cool I mean I've got four of them I've got those guys really stacked up so they should be fine but that was 21.26 volts RMS and 8 ohms alright guys I got another mix sig product I got the current uh, probe on the power supply I wanted to show you something because I saw something uh, well, I, saw, I noticed my power supply the, the current limit light was clipping and so we got the differential probe down here and now we've got now I got the current probe hooked up too so it's a mix ignite today trying to pull my stuff apart here okay so we got that clamped on red power lead let's zoom in on the screen a little bit closer okay now watch what happens when I bring up the power the currents down here on the purple the channel 3 okay I'm bringing up the power so a little blip on the current for a moment okay it's pulling about 1.2 amps see the current very little signal let's bring the signal up everything looks solid the current looks solid I got 31.6 volts coming out of the power supply. It's supposed to be good for 3 amps. My generator is putting out about 2 volts right there, but you see, see right there? And then see the top of the waveform is starting to get a little fuzzy. And it's the power supply. My power supply is starting to dip a little bit. And then look at that. Right when it clamps, it really pulls the power supply down. So, yeah, right about there. I'm still pulling my power supply down a little bit. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and freeze that. Well, actually, you know what? Let me see if I can take signal channel 3 and blow it up a little bit. We'll bring that position down. Yeah, look at that. Okay, let me freeze it. And we'll bring the power down. Let the transistor cool. That heat sink actually started getting a little warm that time. All right, so it it doesn't look like a current problem I think what it is it is a voltage problem uh, the peak to peak waveform see it's 10 volts per division 10 20 30 so I'm getting you know right up close to the top of my where my power supply can provide uh, 31 volts out and so right as it gets towards the top then it it must be hitting the rails of my power supply which means the, the current must fold back and then it comes back up after the voltage rose. So that's just the beginnings of clipping my lab bench power supply. That's kind of interesting. I think what that means is the power amplifier is capable of going pretty darn close to rail to rail. Okay guys, so I have uh, channel one, channel two set up. Channel 1 is the differential probe. Channel 2 is the oscilloscope probe at the input. So channel 1 is looking at the output. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the position center both right in the middle of the screen on top of each other. And I've got them set up AC coupled. Uh, the differential probe is at 50 kilohertz at 50x. And channel 2 is at 10x otherwise they're all the same full bandwidth all that stuff AC coupled all right so then I'm going to come up here to the apps menu and I get so it would have come up with this screen here but I've already been there so it comes up with the we want a frequency response analysis so we come over here select that yes we want that and we get this window then the reference circuit says okay generator one comes out along with channel one on the input in our case we're going to have channel two at the input and channel one on the output so uh, this is just reference kind of showing how it does it but 
when we go to setup here we're going to say inputs channel 2 instead of channel 1 we can select which one and output channel 1 then eight, the uh, generator setup is 20 hertz to 100 kilohertz and we're going to put out 1.3 volts and the load is low impedance okay so that's the generator setup and then our points per decade we could go up to 90 but and down 10 but somewhere in the middle usually gets enough points get a nice smooth curve so we'll try 30 going higher just takes longer uh, and actually going lower is probably good enough but I like to get extra points okay so reference setup analyze after we run it we can do that right now we just need to hit run so I need to turn on the power and then we'll see our signals and I'll hit this and we'll do a sweep and see what we get okay I'm gonna just zoom in on the screen alright guys everything's all set up and we're ready to go all we have to do is hit the run so I just need to bring, bring up power on the power supply so you can hear my lab bench supply rearing Okay, I'm bringing up the power and everything's looking like it's working so let's go ahead and hit the run and up here it'll auto scale so that we get a nice picture of the waveforms they look like they're pretty close in phase it auto scales the horizontal and the vertical so that's why you kind of see it wiggling okay the gains blue and you can see it's starting off very flat the phase is red and it's just taking a little bit of a dip from started off around 12 degrees and dropping towards zero and these scales will auto adjust as the traces cross so if they do come across very flat they'll auto scale to high resolution so to look like they're moving around but it's just because you know they're zoomed in so tight and one thing I look for up here is to make sure the waves look pretty good and they look like they're pretty close in phase now they're starting to separate here there's 10k 20k and we're approaching 100k alright we're done 100k I just turned off the lab supply to let it rest while we play around okay we'll go here what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a zero here and we're pretty close to zero right around in here so let's go to, let's go here and go to gain offset and we'll adjust to get a zero alright so it looks like we have a zero right there and then we have 5 dB per uh, division so that's pretty tight it stayed pretty flat up to about 10 K okay let's get a zero on the phase over here okay we got a zero right here and that is 15 degrees per division so okay let's turn on our measurement devices our cursors wow okay from the last time I've done this it was kind of set up so here let's look at cursor one cursor one cursor one right here at the end right at the beginning of our scan at 20 Hertz and we have 19.66 DB and it's about 17 degrees at that point so let's just let's just scroll that guy over and see how flat it stays 19.9 20 it climbs a little bit that stays right around 20.1 stays right around 20.1 all the way across so I'd say from from 3 dBs down would we're looking at 17 so let's come down here so right about 17 is right between those two spots so it looks like number two is already set there 
So we'll just put this guy back at the beginning at 20 hertz. <clears throat> okay, that guy's at 20, and uh, cursor 2's at 16. And we have about 41 degrees right there. And then it drops just below 45, and then it goes back up to 45. So it looks like we could probably adjust our feedback so that maybe we could get a little more flatness towards 20 kilohertz. This looks like a great start, right? All right guys, so hey, what do you think? Oh, still got my safety glasses. Wanted to show you that I actually do wear them. My blast shield, keep things from blasting up in my face while I'm standing here uh, trying to film. And a lot of things to think about when you're filming. Microphones, lights, batteries, all this stuff. And the least thing you want is your amplifier blowing up in your face. <laughs> so, all right guys, it looks pretty good. I mean, a good start, right? I was being pretty careful with cycling power on and off, getting a little bit of confidence, building it up, and I was watching the current. It didn't really fluctuate much, not not really at all. It was really solid. So I think one of the things we're going to want to do is play around with that potentiometer to find the sweet spot for our performance. Right now, I kind of, you know, I kind of went on the low end to get less current in case. You know, I was overheating, but I could feel underneath the heat sinks, things didn't feel too bad. I think the design is set up so that when it's in the box that they had designed it for, that it would rise up to an ambient 55C on the box. So about a 30 degree C rise. So, yeah, I, I could believe that. With all this heat sinking I have on this one channel, uh, I could see it getting that hot if I left it on, but you know the one thing about a Class A design is when you bring up the power, you're going to see current. It's not like on a Class A B or something where you're not going to see a lot of current until you start putting a signal in and running it through a load. Whether you have load or not, you're going to see power. I think this design is set up to run at about two and a half times the input power that you're going to get on the output. And I'm assuming that probably doesn't even take into account the power factor. I don't know. We'll find out, okay? I want to make this thing a little flatter, a little, uh, you know, out to 20K. So we're going to work on that too, okay? Hey, what do you guys think? Let me know what your thoughts are, your suggestions, all that stuff. If you've got some experience building, testing one of these things. And uh, that will be fun to see. So... I want to thank the Patreons for all their support and all you guys for watching the videos, supporting the channel. That's awesome. And, hey, can't wait to do some more testing. So, we'll see you next time.